I love winter. The clouds, the rain, the hail falling down, running through puddles. Uh, it used to be like this when I was a child, and I was always fascinated by lightning. I was looking at the west, those storm clouds, dark coming in from the west, and then, boom, lightning. Lightning always fascinated me. So when in 1982 I started my education at Tel Aviv University studying geophysics, I kept my fascination going on lightning. And I studied lightning from the ground using special cameras, from airplanes, from the space shuttle, and from the International Space Station. I wish it was like this today, the winter that I used to have when I was a child, because obviously it's not like this. Is it the same where you live? Is this what you feel when you think about winter? Here in Israel, in the Middle East, winter got shorter by 12 days, and it's becoming warmer and drier. So definitely our climate is changing, and there are many signs for this change that we can easily observe. Look, for example, at 2020, the hurricane season in the Atlantic, record-breaking, huge number of mega storms hitting the US East Coast and the Caribbean. Forest fires in California and Australia induced by thunderstorms and by the dryness and droughts. Record temperature in Alaska and in Siberia. So what's going on? Climate is changing. I can give many more examples, but I want to focus on my favorite one, which is lightning. Lightning is so awesome, so fearful, so energetic and dangerous. It was feared and worshipped by ancient civilizations. Taranis, Thor with the hammer, Jupiter, of course, Ligong, Chinese mythology, all those gods were feared and revered in ancient mythology. So when we look at the Earth from space, we can see lightning flickering around. And actually, it's the electric pulse of our planet. 50 pulses per second, every second of every day. And we can look at this seasonal cycle of lightning changing from the seasons from the northern hemisphere to the southern hemisphere. And lightning actually was the initiator of life, maybe the ancient spark that ignited the basic chemistry needed for life. And lightning is still influencing with its many frequencies, specific ones, uh, on, the, on the living beings, and maybe even on our electrical brain. So living creatures have accumulated this electrical spark into their own system this unique relationship between planetary electricity and the biosphere. And recently, lightning is also out of sync. We can see this very clearly. Really massive hailstorms with giant balls of ice falling from the sky, flash floods in many urban cities. We can see this in the news many, many times. Maybe you've been exposed to this yourself. And the damages are piling up. Insurance companies can put numbers on the damages caused by severe weather, which is directly introduced by climate change, and it accounts to millions of dollars every year. Houses, infrastructures, roads, power lines. Hurricane Sandy alone in 2012 caused $70 billion of damage to the US, and Typhoon Hain in uh, the Philippines caused $14 billion of damage to that country. So damages are piling up, certainly, but also death. Every year, thousands of people are killed by lightning, working outside, mostly in tropical areas. You think it's a surprise, but maybe because you live in a Western world, urban society, but in those places, lightning is a killer. And we know that lightning damages will be stronger and harder in the future. One of the effects we're already seeing is urban enhancement of lightning. Major cities, large urban built areas which emit heat, moisture and pollution, cause lightning to be more frequent above the city and downwind from the city. This is an enhancement of what nature used to give us. Now we get more of those little energetic lightning. And we already see in some parts of the world this weekday weekend effect where you have more lightning during weekdays where pollution is higher compared to the weekend. And damages are piling up to cities as well. We can see lightning strikes to buildings, to power lines, to high-tech companies. All this is amazing and increasing in the future. And we will see more airplanes, more ships being struck by lightning as they cross areas where lightning is more abandoned. So what can we do about this? 
in my feeling, it's, it's an emotion state that our planet is in danger, something bad is happening. When I was uh, looking at the planet from space, you see this blue marble, beautiful blue planet. And actually, it resonates very well with the ancient Greek mythology uh, concept of the Gaia. Gaia is the embodiment of all natural life, the mother of creation, the mother of living creatures. And it's a synonym with our blue, beautiful planet. And Gaia was also a theory, an hypothesis, raised by, in the 1970s by Lynn Margulis and uh, James Lovelock that said that all living organisms are interconnected with the Earth's systems that create a system that self-generates and regulates its conditions such that it will support the existence of life. And I really like this theory even today. And we see that when we perturb Gaia, we perturb the planet, it will come back at us tenfold. No surprise here. And actually, this is what we have been doing. Since the early 19th century, we've been burning fossil fuels and increasing greenhouse gas concentrations in the atmosphere and temperature are rising on the planet, and climate is changing, and we can already see the results of those changes. We can see ice, polar ice, melting very quickly. We can see the receding of mountain glaciers, such that the snow line is coming higher. All this is really bringing us the question to ponder, are we really going to burn down our own house? We have impacted the biosphere in such a severe way, depleting natural resources, drying out lakes and waterbeds, such that living creatures cannot adapt quickly enough to what's going on, and they are destroyed. Many species, the biodiversity is being hampered and minimized because of climate change, probably caused by us. And when we think of this, do you think the planet will stand still? Some may think, well, the response of the planet is something we can call Gaia's revenge. But this is, of course, a human term. We attribute human properties to a system that has no consciousness. It's just the planet that is changing. And we are powerless. To be honest, we are powerless against the powers of nature. For if I take back my example of lightning, a single lightning flash has the energy to light up an entire city for weeks. And if you look at a hurricane or a typhoon, the wind energy accumulated totally in such a storm can light up a country for weeks. So we are actually powerless against nature and its uh, energy that is released at us in many, many forms. But we must ask ourselves, what can we do? Should we just give up? We should actually prepare and establish resilience because future generations will have it harder. Climate is not stopping, it will be more, more fierce, more severe. So that's the reality, and we need to get ready. Gaia will not relent. But maybe, just maybe, we can harness this into a different game. Maybe we can actually use those powers of nature, this free electrical energy in the sky, and attract it and use it to our benefit. Maybe we can revert using fossil fuels and use electrical energy coming back from the sky. Now, this is a very interesting and challenging idea because lightning is so hard to predict. But honestly, in the last couple of years, we become very good at predicting lightning. We know using machine learning and AI and some basic atmospheric physics to tell where lightning will strike in the next three hours with 80% accuracy. That's amazing. Of course, we don't know precisely where it will hit us, but Guys, this is a good approximation of where lightning can occur and where we can work to take those electricity uh, from the sky. So there's a challenge, an engineering challenge for you to think about. Maybe we should have a lightning field. Maybe we should shoot up rockets into the clouds and take this electrical energy and store it. So if storage energy moves fast enough, we can perhaps revert to this uh, bountiful amount of energy that is just there in the sky, in the clouds, every day, as I said, 50 times per second. Imagine that. In my favorite science fiction film, the hero, Marty McFly, uses the DeLorean car to fly back from 1955, where he was trapped, into the future, which was then 1985. 
He did that because the professor, Doc Brown, knew exactly where a lightning strike will occur. At 10.04 p.m., it struck the church tower and the electrical energy, 10 gigawatts of energy, was pumped into the car such the hero could fly back to the present, which he was the future at the time. So my talk was not about science fiction and not about time travel. My sole purpose was just to ignite your curiosity. I'm not going to give you advice how to appease the wrath of Gaia. You can read about it. There are many, many websites and actions that you need to take, and I urge you to do that. My sole purpose is to show you what's going on, ignite your curiosity, and I was just Gaia's messenger, and I really hope you paid attention. <laughs>